And we are back and we are going to do our, or actually look at a very, very important class of defects. 1D defects now, we're moving up in dimensionality, and those are dislocation defects. So 1D defects. So dislocations are really, really important and critical when we're looking at trying to understand how do materials behave mechanically. Um, so what are the mechanical behavior? Defects, dislocations can influence properties, again, this whole relationship of structure dictates properties, performance, um, et cetera, et cetera, and, proce and processes can change the structure of materials and then the performance and then the properties. Um, but dislocations can affect yield strength, and they strongly affect yield strength um, and a lot of other different mechanical properties as well. Um, but what is a dislocation? So these are line defects. Um, a dislocation is, you can kind of imagine... It's the translation of one part of the crystal with respect to another part. Um, or, in other words, it's we will see it's like adding an extra half piece of paper into um, a bundle of paper. A disclination, um, that is basically a rotation. It's a twist of one crystal structure. Um, but we're going to be focused on edge dislocations and screw dislocations. Um, screws can be right-handed or left-handed screws. Um, and again, edge dislocation is this extra half plane of atoms that's inserted. So you can kind of see here, I've got a perfect row of atoms, perfect row of atoms here, perfect row of atoms here, perfect row of atoms here, and then now this half plane of atoms, that's not, it doesn't continue here. So I'm putting this unfinished uh, plane of atoms here instead of these perfect structures. So this is your extra half plane. An edge dislocation is denoted by this signal. And it's important that, again, this indicates where that extra half plane is. It's basically the polarity. So atoms that are like this, or d defects that are like this and this, they will actually attract, and we will see that in later lectures, because they want to kind of complete this extra half plane. So this is like a positive polarity, this is a negative polarity, but if I have defects that are this and this and are right next to each other, positive and positive, these will actually repel. And we can prove that, and we'll actually show that um, uh, basically in some lectures that we'll see a little bit later on. Um, so that is uh, essentially your screws, actually your edge dislocations, and then you can kind of see those differences here. Um, so, and actually, we can actually see here, um, screw dislocation will be perpendicular um, to the applied force. We'll look at that. There's wedge and twist dislocations, um, but we, we won't talk uh, too much about that, but they do exist. Now, how do we know if a defect is a edge dislocation, a screw, a right-hand screw, or a left-hand screw? It's all about how we can describe essentially these defects. And when we have a dislocation, we have dislocation, dislocation core and a dislocation line. And we describe defects and dislocations, actually dislocations specifically, with a tangent vector. A tangent vector goes along, it's tangent to that defect. So my tangent vector is basically going you know, this extra half plane is going either into the board or we can describe it out of the board, but it will be tangent. So it's going, it's tangent to that dislocation line. Um, so we will actually describe that a little bit better. Um, actually a little bit more sooner. Um, uh, and it's also described by Berger's vector. So the tangent vector is always tangent to dislocation line. The Berger's vector, we will define that by drawing a Berger circuit. Now, there's lots of different ways that you can define a Berger circuit. Um, but in this class, we will be using the following notation. So if you see something different, now the Berger's vector should always be conserved. Uh, conserved. So whatever method you use, you should you should always have the relationship. If it's the relationship between the tangent vector and the Berger's vector is perpendicular, that is an edge defect or an edge uh, an edge dislocation. Whatever method you use, you should find that relationship. But you may find that the direction of that Berger's vector may change depending on the notation. But we are going to use the start to finish SF, start to finish vector, and the right hand essentially convection. So how are we going to do that? First thing, we're going to choose our positive tangent vector. What's the next step? We are going to then draw a right hand circuit that contains essentially that dislocation. So we're going to define the starting point, finishing point, um, and then we will close that circuit you know, and then you're actually gonna basically draw, the Berger's vector will connect start to finish. So SF, start to finish, that's where you draw your vector. Start to the finish vector. So, um, 
Burgers vector again is going to be conserved. It doesn't matter how you choose essentially your tangent vectors. Um, and a dislocation count and, and inside a crystal. Once you complete the circuit, if your Burgers vector is perpendicular to your tangent vector, then that is going to be actually this T cross B point section. I have to point out that is that will be an edge dislocation. If you have a screw, if it's parallel to the tangent vector, it's going to be right hand screw. If it's anti parallel, it's left hand screw. Um, you can also have a mixed dislocation. This is the real in, in reality in materials. You're going to have essentially mixed dislocations. So some parts of it will be edge, some parts of it will be screw, some parts will be left hand screw. So there will be some components of both. Um, but again, we are going to basically you know focus on kind of the pure examples here in this course. Um, so and the other key thing is that when you reverse or you change essentially the sense of T, your Burgers vector will switch as well. And we're going to see that in a couple of the examples um, that we're going to do here on kind of ideal systems, uh, so to speak. Um, so let's actually do some examples of Burger circuits for edge and screw and see how they uh, appear.